Now, from the makers of Cold Water Omo, John Steed, in the office of the Harachi Corporation, appeared to be very interested in what Tusamo, the Japanese manager, was saying about his business concern. Our research division was established in 1960 to produce an inexpensive record player. That was just the start. Most successful, very high profit, enabled us to extend. Look, the photographs here on the wall. While Tosamo turned with his back to the desk, Steed quickly whipped open the folder that contained the list of all the competitors and snapped open the handle of his umbrella. Inside was a miniature camera. The shutter moved silently. Yes? Your next appointment is here, Mr. Tosamo. Thank you. Mr. Steed is just leaving. Well, you'll be hearing from me shortly. Goodbye. This way out, please, Mr. Steed. Steed left the office by the other door. As he did so, Tosamo heard the sound of footsteps. The shadow of an enormous man became outlined against the glass panel, filling the entire doorway. Tosamo didn't even look up as the door slowly opened. The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Episode 3 of this story, in which John Steed and Emma Peel meet several more disturbing characters who all seem to possess a deadly gift. John Steed and Emma Peel could only proceed on the little evidence they had in this rather curious case. Four men had died, and each in very similar circumstances all with either fractured skulls or broken necks. To Mrs. Peel, it looked like the work of one man, a superb karate expert. She'd investigated several judo and karate studios in London. The most interesting one was Sensai's gymnasium. Her brief encounter there with Oyuka, the immovable one, a woman expert, had proved quite satisfying. Mrs. Peel's performance had certainly qualified her for membership. She permitted herself a grin of pleasure as she recalled the amazed look on Oyuka's face as she picked herself up, having been thrown through some Japanese screens. Perhaps the look still showed on Mrs. Peel's face when she turned up at Steed's apartment. Swallow the cream, Mrs. Peel. Hmm? What's that, Steed? Well, you look positively smug. <laughs> Not really. Just a petty minor triumph. Bigger things to come, I hope. How are things with you? Well, come into the kitchen. I'll show you. Steed led the way into his kitchen. There, on the draining board, was a photographic enlarger and a recently developed print. Steed picked it out of the fixing solution and washed it under the tap, drying it on some blotting paper. Interesting. A list of names and firms. All in competition for the rights of concession to Mr. Tusama's business at the Harachi Corporation. I interviewed the said honourable gentleman earlier. No, rather, he interviewed me. And the concession goes to whatever firm offers the largest profits. He was cagey and wouldn't say what offers he'd had. Ah, oh, we have a saying, Mr. Steed, in darkness, ceiling is always higher. So you had to pinch the information. How'd you do it? Well, as Tosama might say, um... Oh, we have a proverb, he who talks too much forgets his listener. <laughs> now, that's not Confucius. How right you are, John Steed, actually. How did you get on with the karate mob? Oh, I made out all right. You'll soon to be having to find a Japanese name for me. I'm learning fast. Mm, going through with it? Mm -hmm. How often do they get together? Nightly. Is there a list of members? Well, that wouldn't help. They all have these wretched pseudonyms. I dealt with Oyoka, the immovable one, who was quickly removed. I can't wait to meet Oyama, the tall mountain. Oh, come now, Mrs. B. What's he got that I haven't? A hobby. Uh, you mean photography, like this? No, splitting down doors, like this. <laughs> Destructive. Steed finished drying the photographic print and pursed his lips with interest. 
Mm. Well, now, isn't that interesting? Let me see. 2.15 p.m. commercial imports, 2.30 p.m. electrical industries, 2.45 p.m. United Automation, 3 p.m. Industrial Developments, 3.15 p.m. Jeffcoat Products Limited, 3.30 Auto Engineering. Mm, yes, and victim number one was Carlson, negotiator for commercial imports, 2 Denham Auto Engineering, 3 Hammond Electrical Industries, 4 Lambert Industrial Developments, as they say... A pot I meant. But if you kill off one negotiator, they replace him with another. No, it's not so easy. There's a lot of paperwork, meetings, discussions, and Tassana's only in London for 36 hours. Let me see that list again. We're left with Jeffka Products and United Automation. Any preference, Mrs. Peel? Hmm. I think I'll take Jeffka Products. It doesn't sound so, well, so automatic as United Automation, does it, Steve? Later, in the small showroom of Jeffcott Products, Mrs. Peel watched with fascination and amusement various toys on the table. <laughs> How cute. How very, very cute. Everyone's too amused at that particular model, Miss... Uh... Uh, Mrs. Mrs. Emma Peel. Ah, yes, Mrs. Peel. So pleased to meet you. Thank you. What are these retailer? Four pounds. Mm -hmm. And our terms are very favourable with orders above a gross. Well, I'm certainly taken with all the range, but I would like a word with Mr. Jeffcoat. Ah, and how lucky you are. But here he is now. How do you do? How do you do? Sorry if I've kept you. Uh, Mrs. Emma Peel, Mr. Jeffcott, if you'll just excuse me now. Yes, yes, of course. Oh, now, Mrs. Peel, I gather that you uh, represent the Goringer store. Yes, we just opened a toy department. Well, I'm sure we can find plenty to interest you. We've no equals in the field of electronic toys. These, for instance. Oh, here's something we're all very proud of. Jeff could bent down and lifted a small woolly dog and placed it on the table. It comes when it's called. Go on, try it. Oh, all right. Here. Here, boy. Come here. <coughs> <coughs> it works. <coughs> it's walking towards me. I'm marvellous. Oh, of course, novelties are only a fraction of our business. We produce everything from tea makers to radar equipment. And with the new advance in electronics, we've lots more ideas on the drawing board. Have you got a catalogue? Yes, I've brought you one. Here you are. And uh, now will you excuse me? I'm awfully sorry, but I'm afraid I have an appointment. Oh, not to worry, because curiously enough, so have I. I hope we shall see you again. Oh, I'm sure you will, Mr. Jeffcoat. I'm sure you will. What Mrs. Peel and Mr. Jeffcott didn't tell each other was what their respective appointments were. Mrs. Peel's was to go off to a routine practice at the karate school. She bowed politely to Oyuka, who attempted a withering look quite lost on Mrs. Peel, and changed into her practice things, taking up her position in the line with the rest of the students. Sensei made an announcement. And now, a demonstration of Tamashawari by a student of whom I am truly proud. A fifth dan at judo, a fourth dan at karate. Oyama is an example of what can be achieved through practice and dedication. As a gong echoed throughout the lighted area, Oyuka moved forward, carrying a large 18-inch block of hard wood. She took a firm stance, and with both hands held out the wood before her. I give you Oyama. Mrs. Peel peered across the shoulders of the surrounding students, looking into the demonstration area. The large figure of a man in traditional robes entered under the lights. He drew back his arm and struck with tremendous force. <laughs> The man slowly turned and faced his audience. He smiled. It was Jeffcott. You, um, sure you won't join me, Gilbert? Uh, no, no, I daren't. I'm seeing the minister about these research estimates. He's got a nose like a hawk, if that's the correct expression. A bit wrong somewhere, I think, but I understand. Well, how much time can you give me? Oh, uh, about three minutes. No, it's time enough. 
Now, I just want to know what goes on at United Automation. Well, they produce domestic and industrial contraptions. And do you know who runs it? <laughs> I should do. I worked under him for quite a spell. Uh, Dr. Armstrong. Uh, why did he leave the ministry? Well, you know what we're doing there. Armstrong refused to tell the official line, felt we should be constructive instead of destructive, had some crazy idea of building some machine for clearing debris in radioactive areas. The top brass said no, but he went ahead. There was an accident, wrecked half the building, lost half his staff, and put himself permanently in a wheelchair. Oh, so they got rid of him? Yes, that's right. With very few tears, I might add. Hmm. Tell me more. Well, I, I, I think Armstrong was born with a slide rule in his mouth. I'm sure his very first words in the cradle were pi r squared. Given a choice between Lord of Brigida and his electronic calculator, he'd prefer the equation every time. Well, he's certainly eluded. How does one reach this human computer? Uh, it's not easy. He's buried himself in a jungle of gadgetry. I'll need to start pulling a few strings. Then start pulling, Gilbert old son. Start pulling. In the anteroom of United Automation, John Benson crossed over to a panel that contained a television screen. He switched it on and reached for a microphone. On the screen flashed the large, confident face of Dr. Armstrong. He barked out. Well, Benson... I've seen Tusamo again. Go on. There are two offers still to come. Two? Who's the other one? I don't know. I thought the girl was being cooperative. Yes, she is, but it's not easy. He has the names in a confidential file. She's trying. I should be hearing from her soon. All right. Well, when you do, call me at once. Understood? That's all. My patience is exhausted. The TV screen went dead. Benson muttered, That's what another dictator was fond of saying. And look how he ended up. Avengers. Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers, brought to you by the makers of Cold Water Omo. The Avengers, Donald Monat as John Steed and Diane Appleby as Emma Peel is adapted and directed by Dennis Falbig and produced by David Gooden.